Sorry about that. Uh, hey there, guys. Music fan here. How are you guys doing? Um, as I, I did put out a video a little bit before um, about just a random video because I was tired. <laughs> but I am going to try and make another attempt right now. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of a short review of U2's new album, Songs of Innocence. Um, so yeah, let's let's get talking about it really quick. Um, obviously, the follow-up to Songs of Experience. Um, I don't need to tell I don't need to tell you guys about the about the, the Apple thing. You guys already know they took some they took some flack for that, for which I personally don't care. Um, wow, it's pretty windy outside. Um, I personally didn't care too much because I thought it was amazing that they did that for me personally but um apparently no one else did not no one else but like there's a huge amount of people that thought it was crap that they did they, that they they did that but uh anyways this is the follow-up to songs of innocence and i think in a nutshell from what i can say of of all the tracks i've heard this album it's it's marginally a more superior to Songs of Innocence. I mean, Songs of Innocence had a bit more of an immediate with the rock tracks um, in that album. This one, a little bit less so, but there is a bit more of, a, of an awareness to it. There's a bit more of an I mean, of emotional quality to all the tracks, like the first song, Love Is All We Have Left, um, that's very sparse, very minimal kind of song. And I'm perfectly fine with Bono and his um, uh, auto-tune vocals. I mean, it, doesn't, it, it, it has no problem for me. Um, it's not the whole song. It's just, and some auto-tune use can enhance a song if used correctly. Um, uh, in other tracks, like uh, the, little, the Little Things I Give You Away, oh my gosh, I love... I love that song. I generally do. I mean, it's such an emotional track. I mean, it reminds me of Bad from The Unforgettable Fire in its structure and everything. Uh, and also songs like Summer of Love and Love is Bigger Than Anything in His Way, 13, There is a Light. Um, but you also have your more rocking tracks, your more kind of classic U2 anthems with that YouTube quality, like songs like American Soul, which when I first heard it, I absolutely hated at first because I thought it was just, the chorus was so weak and just so such a bum out chorus at first until I saw them perform live on SNL and then I was like, okay, done for life. Um, and now this song has really grown on me a lot, you know. Like, it's a letter to America of welcoming refugees and keeping American soul. That's why the title. Um, so you have rockers like that all over this record. But overall, this album... Um, oh, I, I drifted away from, <laughs> from the comparison. Uh, I, I put this a notch or so above Songs of, Ex uh, Songs of Innocence. Way higher than No Line on the Horizon even though I've gotten to like that album as of late. Um, but I think it's kind of a notch or so below All That You Can't Leave Behind and How to Dismantle an Atomic Bomb for me. I think, especially behind, I, I think they, 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 those two were the last great to really good U2 records that they had in their catalog and their discography before No Line on the Horizon and I think ever, ever since then they've been kind of on this mellow trip as of late. Um, I say that with a lot of love though, being a huge U2 fan myself. Um, but overall, this, for, for what it's worth, this record is still amazing on its own. Um, I mean... You have, you have songs like um, Lights of Home, which kind of has a gospel feel to it, like Stuck in the Moment and Still Haven't Found. Um, especially love that it switches from that part to this even more intense gospel moment, reciting 
lyrics from Iris from Songs of Innocence. Uh, and also you get snippets of Songs of Innocence songs into tracks of songs of experience, like American Soul borrows from Volcano in the chorus, and uh, There is a Light obviously has lyrical reference to a song for someone from Innocence. Um, again, it was this theme of William Blake's book, poem book, uh, Songs of Innocence and Experience, which I thought was kind of an interesting way to, to make these two albums very sequential to each other, with Innocence dealing with the past, with youth, and this one dealing with uh, present situations, like Bono has had recent health scares in the last year or so, and, that's, and also that the change in the political climate from Donald Trump's ascension into power and uh, Brexit. Uh, there was a bit of commentary on that on this record. Uh, I mean, a majority of the songs I love, like three, three tracks on this record for me are highlights, are just ones I'm going to be listening to for ages. Like, and they're Get Out of Your Own Way, Red Flag Day, and Little Things That Give You Away. Three amazing songs. I mean, if I had to pick a favorite, it'd have to be Get Out of Your Own Way because it's just such a catchy, such a great, fantastic rock song um, with a little bit of pop in it to make it very catchy, but it's just amazing. I just love it. It's like, it's as if, if you would put Beautiful Day meets Invisible together and then pop, poof, you have that song. And it's amazing. I love it. I love Red Flag Day. Uh, it's a super punchy, catchy rock song. Uh, reminds me of the War album, but not as raw and not as uh, visceral. But either way, the, the catchiness more than makes up for it. Um, if I had to pick a least favorite song for me, it have to be The Showman. Oh, I really don't like that song, honestly. I really don't like it. Um, there's some elements about that song that are good, like Edge's guitars are good in this song. The rhythm section of uh, Adam and Larry are amazing. Like the rest, this whole album, all the songs, I mean, Larry and Adam are just simply fantastic. They have a fantastic rhythm section. They're Adam's bass is just pummeling all the way through, and, and Larry's drums are just keeping everything tight and concise. It's amazing, really. Uh, but other than that, this whole song is just a complete drab for me. Uh, they've done so much better at crafting these very self-depreciating, mocking jokes of their fame and of their celebrity in the past, I mean, I'm reminded of a uh, stand-up comedy from No Line is one example, and I think I marginally think that track is a little better at conveying that than, than this song, but that's just me. Yeah, I have, that's my least favorite song. Landlady is really beautiful. I, I, I get a picture of me gliding through the city skyline at night stars outside and in space and the full moon i mean it's such a beautiful song really fantastic and the guitar chords everything the instrumentation is just so amazing like i get like the metaphor i use the gliding through the through the through, through the city just beautiful uh love is bigger than anything in its way another good song another great track um it's a nice second to last song to bring everything down, just to cool, just to cool the mood down, per se. And 13, There Is A Light, as I've said, recite, uh, recites a um, song for someone in its lyrics. It's almost kind of lullaby in its quality, like it's Bono's telling his kids to, you know, be kind, be, be empathic, and continue standing up for justice and for truth and not letting yourselves get in your own way. Uh, see what he did there? <laughs> that was awful. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you get, you, you get my point. Uh, it's a very, very calm, moody um, closer to the album for me. 
kind of similar to the first track, which is also unique in it itself, because like a lot of U2 songs tend to start off with these very punchy rockers. But this one is, is kind of different. It starts off very mellow and slow. I mean, I've, and, and it's a unique opener for a U2 record. Um, other than that, this album has really strong qualities. Um, it has a really strong, intimate, intimate performances, intimate lyrical writing. Some of the, some of U2's best future classics are on this record. But in terms of where it stacks in their discography, I would put again. I've said I've said this before, but I would have if I would have a top ten. This clearly would not be top five. Sorry. Spoiler alert, it clearly would not be top five. I would say around top ten, like maybe eleven, or maybe around that around that particular number, but clearly not at the top five. This is not U2's best album, and, and in some ways it's a little disappointing for me because I thought they this would have been the perfect time with all the political turmoil to capture the zeitgeist of the moment like the blackout for instance which by the way even still i prefer the the live facebook version it's much more raw and more visceral than than what we ended up on the album itself i mean i don't know why but i personally still prefer the live version but they but in a way it's kind of mixed really because on the one hand, this doesn't this album really doesn't capture the zeitgeist as well as I would have hoped. But on the other hand, it's again, it's like the personal aspect of, of the band always seems to come to shine through more than their very staunch political, socially aware side with this album. Like overall, I would have to give this record a 3.9 out of 5. It's a, at times ve almost a little bit middle of the road at times, but because the songs that do really stand out are fantastic, it really saves the record, in my opinion, for me. And there are some qualities on this album that the band did that really keeps this album from, from being a drab, mainly. Um, yeah, 3.9 out of 5. That's my rating for this record. It's a really good U2 album. It has a lot of heart and a lot of soul. I just kind of wished there was a more bigger emphasis on rock, a bigger emphasis on guitars, a bigger emphasis on, you know, like being socially aware of the, of the consciousness of what's going on in the world. I mean, they have that there with uh, Red Flag Day, and Summer of Love, but that's just about it. Um, anyway, sorry for this constantly in the video, but that's it. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Tell me what you think of the album. Do you love it? Do you hate it? And leave, leave me your thoughts. Uh, Mr. Music Fan, Songs of Innocence, you too. See you guys next time. Take care.